Hello. Welcome back to the Sankofa Pan African series with me, Momi Oyinson. In this episode, I'd like to tackle the question Were ancient Egyptians white or black? While this question might sound nonsensical, it is one which has never been laid to rest, even within some academic circles. But we should, however, marvel at the ridiculous claims by some history books which ascribe the ancient Egyptian civilization to Hamites. These historians describe Hamites as, wait for it, whitish black people, in spite of evidence which shows that the prehistoric native Egyptians, both in the Old and New Stone Ages, were people who migrated to Egypt from other places within the continent of Africa, located south of, 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 um, of Egypt. This implausible claim that the earliest civ Egyptian civilization was achieved by people who were not Africans is still prevalent, even in spite of evidence to the contrary, written in stone. Stone. The earliest recorded history of the origins of the Egyptian civilization are the Edfu texts which records the earliest history of the Nile Valley and the origins of the ancient Egyptian civilization. Now, the Edfu texts record that Horus, who was the oldest pre-dynastic ruler of Egypt, came from an area which was south of Egypt after conquering other places in the south. Horus then moved northwards and the people whom he conquered submitted to his rule. This ancient um, Edfu text narrates how through this king, who came from the south of Egypt, civilization was brought in the form of iron smithing to Egypt. His followers were known as blacksmiths because they introduced iron implements to the people that they conquered. In order to emphasize the relationship between ancient Egypt and other parts of Africa, E. A. Wallace Budge, who wrote extensively on ancient civilizations, points to several aspects of religion and customs of the ancient Egyptians that suggest that their original home was somewhere around Uganda and modern-day Somalia. Other researchers of remote antiquity have also written extensively to show that ancient Ethiopia had a population that was large and powerful enough to conquer ancient Egypt. And it did. We'll get to that in later episodes. Now, studies like the ones con uh, the one conducted by Wallace Budge show complex, complex interconnectivity between the ancient Ethiopian civilization and ancient Egypt. The ruins of old Zimbabwe, which are built in stone and bear similarities to Egyptian architecture, also prove the complexity and connectivity between ancient Egypt and sub-Saharan Africa. It is only logical to then assume that the Nile River must have served as a cultural conduit for taking aspects of civilization and culture back and forth between Egypt and its sub-Saharan African neighbors. As such, the Egyptian civilization, which preceded the Greek and Roman civilizations, cannot be seen to have been isolated from the rest of the African continent. Again, it is equally important to challenge some of the claims about the contributions of ancient Greece to civilization. One of the examples of such claims which should be questioned has to do with the field of medicine and, and its evolution. 
and how the contribution of Imhotep, an ancient Egyptian, to this field of medicine has been overshadowed by Hippocrates, who was Greek. Now, Imhotep has been credited as one of the architects of the pyramids in Egypt. This naturally places him in a time and age well before Hippocrates. He was chancellor and court physician to Zosa, ruler of Egypt. He lived and died and was deified as the god of medicine 2,000 years before Hippocrates, who has now been canonized as the father of medicine. Imhotep's innovation in the field of medicine, an area of healing, like other Egyptian ideas, was borrowed and became the foundation of what we now know as Greek culture and philosophy. Please don't be lured into thinking that this attempt to negate Africa's contribution to civilization is a thing of the past. Please take a moment and Google the question we're tackling today. Were ancient Egyptians white or black? One of the answers that will top the, Google, the list on Google is one which claims scientists now know. And it's an example of efforts by people who are trying to prove that ancient Egyptians were not related to sub-Saharan Africans. The article claims that there is now DNA proof to show that ancient Egyptians were not black Africans. However, I beg you, take your time and read through the um, the article and you will discover that the so-called scientists who are supposed to have found answers to these questions were unable to find any mitochondrial DNA in the mummified remains which they studied. None of the remains which they studied was older than 1300 BC. And the fact that pre-dynastic Egypt existed between 5000 and 3100 BC, a period that is not covered by their research, does not stop them from making their spurious claim. They went ahead and pro to proclaim that ancient Egyptians were not related to sub-Saharan Africans. While I'm not trying to argue that Egypt was invaded and became heavily mixed over several centuries, and that present-day Egyptians have a closer affinity to Arabs and Persians as a result of the various waves of migrations, there is overwhelming evidence to prove that the original inhabitants of ancient Egypt were African. Please don't get me wrong. This is not an attempt to romanticize Africa and its contributions. Neither is this an attempt to exonerate Africans. It's apparent that Africans have been as steadfast in our own self-destruction as others who have over centuries colonized the continent physically and mentally. However, I know that Africans have as much inherent ability as any other people. And my motive here is to keep shedding some light on some intricate, on a more intricate history and reality of Africa, Africans and Africans in diaspora. It is important to highlight their contributions to world shaping events and celebrate women and men who have left solid but grossly ignored footprints. Now, let's turn our minds to another mind-boggling question. Why is it difficult to imagine 
that at one point or another, Africa was at the forefront of all world progress. As Africans and people of African descent in the diaspora, we need to constantly question everything handed to us as history. We should wonder why, even after archaeological findings, which reveal that the earliest evidence of human existence were found in Africa, there is little or nothing done to unearth and acknowledge the stories of triumphs alongside failures of humans, of the first humans who populated the earth. Even after the work of the British couple, um, Mary and Louis Leakey, one was a, a paleoanthropologist and the other an archaeologist, the Leakeys found some of the earliest human remains and stone tools in the Oduvai Gorge in East Africa. Yet, very little effort has been made to question the rationale behind the lopsided history, which continues to be taught in schools. If academics like the Leakeys were satisfied that Africa was where human find, humankind first appeared, preceding other continents by several hundred centuries. Why then is it difficult to imagine that at one point or another, Africa was at the forefront of all world progress? Even the most recent discoveries about human, uh, of human uh, remains and tools, which are now being considered older than the old Dubai remains, were all still found in places like Ethiopia, um, Southern um, Africa, and Morocco. These are all located on the African continent. So we should ask, just what were the ancient Africans doing all those thousands of years when they preceded life on all other continents? Again, historians like John Henry Clark, you're beginning to see he's one of my favorite historians. <laughs> John Henry Clark provide us with a more believable scenario than Eurocentric history has taught us. He and some others suggest that Africans figured out some of the most basic problems needed to survive in the climatic environment in which they found themselves. They discovered fire, invented tools, the kind of tools needed for fishing, hunting, and other ways to feed themselves. They also started using the skins of the animals that they killed for food to keep themselves warm when necessary. As such, they laid the foundational work for all the technology that we now enjoy. They also ventured into the arts and anatomy through drawings which they left on cave walls. They did not just invent tools, but started polishing them. Early Africans contributed to the science of chemistry by mixing substances to create different paint colors. They needed those paint colors for the drawings that we now find on, on um, cave walls. They also started planting seeds, leading to the evolution of farming. In other words, it is only logical that since the earliest human remains were found in Africa, preceding the occurrence of life anywhere else, early Africans, through the very act of surviving, laid the very foundation on which all aspects of living have been built, 
every single aspect of life as we know it today was laid by our ancestors. I really do hope you'll continue with me on this journey. Please don't hesitate to question everything I claim. And I really look forward to your comments and any materials that you find out there that help throw more light on what we talk about here. Please send your questions and especially comments on the next topic that I'll be treating. I plan to look more closely into how other parts of Africa influence the Egyptian civilization. And of course, I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed. Please do so if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to share and like our videos. Thank you. See you next time.